Good morning. Good morning and welcome to the Connecticut Main Street Center's Webinar Wednesday. I'm Judith Stahl, your webinar coordinator today, and I'll thank you for spending some time with us this morning. In a moment, we're going to start our presentation today, developing your Main Street action plan. But first, I just have a few housekeeping items. If you or perhaps a colleague has any technical problems today, there's a link in your confirmation email to go to webinar help page that may help you troubleshoot. Today's session will run approximately 45 minutes and we will stop along the way for questions. Please feel free to type questions into your control panel as we go. If it's something I can answer, I will. Otherwise, we'll address questions when we stop for questions. Um, a recording of today's session and a PDF version of the presentation will be available on our website at ctmainstreet.org in the next day or so, as is last month's webinar, which, if you missed it, is a general overview of the Connecticut Main Street Center and our approach to Main Street revitalization. Uh, finally, you will receive a brief survey when you exit today's session. We greatly appreciate your input so we can continue to improve these sessions. So if you wouldn't mind taking the time, I believe it's only five questions. Uh, so now I just want to check and see, it looks like people are still logging in. So we're going to start a little bit slow perhaps and give people time, but I'm going to introduce our speaker today, Connecticut Main Street Center's own Kimberly Parsons Whitaker. Thank you, Judith, and good morning, everyone. Thanks again for joining us. Um, we found, um, we got some good input after our first webinar last month, our overview of the Main Street approach, asking for um, some details, um, and it, it sort of fed right into today's topic, developing our Main Street action plan. So I'm hoping that this is sort of the concrete steps that we are being asked for after our first um, webinar. So by way of introduction, um, Connecticut Main Street Center, we are a statewide nonprofit organization and our mission is to be the catalyst that ignites Connecticut's main streets as the cornerstones of thriving communities. Um, again, we're a nonprofit statewide resource for education, technical assistance, and advocacy on behalf of Connecticut's main streets. That's our town centers, urban downtowns and neighborhood mixed-use districts, and village centers. The Connecticut Main Street Network extends throughout our state, and this network includes professionally managed downtowns and neighborhood districts, municipal planning and economic development departments, and two regional organizations that represent the interests of the many towns in their territories. So today's webinar, we're going to explore the mechanics of developing your Main Street action plan. We'll start with a quick review of the Main Street approach, uh, which is a framework, framework for organizing your action plan. Then we'll dig in on the steps of creating your action plan using a real life example which I always think is most helpful. And we'll close with some guidance on action plan implementation and how to effectively communicate your work to the public. So as we've mentioned, our first webinar provided an overview where we examined the history and the structure of the Main Street approach, which addresses restoring the value of downtown. Both comprehensive and incremental, this four-point approach is intended to be a framework guiding ongoing revitalization efforts. And today we'll show how to build a step-by-step -step plan to address all four points. But first, we'll do a very quick review of the Main Street approach. Number one, organization. Restoring civic value. This is about engaging the community, and convening public and private sectors and working toward consensus around bringing Main Street back to life. It's also about putting communication systems in place in order to keep everyone informed. I like to ask um, with regard to restoring civic value, do you have a university or a community college or another anchor institution close by, as in a hospital or a major employer? These anchors are sources of expertise, possible downtown residents and customers, and certainly partners in, and volunteers in your revitalization effort. Number two, 
design. This is restoring physical value to downtown. It's about getting the district in top physical shape, ensuring downtown is well planned, physically welcoming and accessible and attractive. And this includes planning, historic preservation, and adaptive reuse, particularly adaptive reuse um, with a focus on bringing upper floors back online for residential use. It's about clean, well-lit sidewalks and street trees and public spaces. Also about attractive and welcoming storefronts that fit within the context of your unique downtown. And then finally, about complete streets for all users. Number three is restoring social value, the promotion aspect of downtown. It's about promoting the district's unique characteristics and assets. So this begins with understanding your audience, then identifying and promoting your brand, and creating programming that can be events, retail promotions, and messaging that positions downtown as a destination. And finally, number four, uh, restoring economic value, economic vitality, is about enhancing and diversifying the district's economic base. It begins with establishing relationships with downtown property and business owners and connecting them with resources they need. So improving the economic vitality of downtown requires an understanding of your market. You need to know your numbers. Do you have an up-to-date inventory of downtown buildings and businesses? Do you know who lives in town, what do they purchase, and where? Um, I like to ask if downtown businesses do periodically capture zip codes from customers. Um, this is a good way to know where your customers are coming from. And those entities that are um, doing events in downtown, do you capture information from event attendees, as in how far did they travel to attend? What would they like to do on their return visit? And then also, are you um, possibly missing out on a vibrant downtown economy because the upper floors of downtown buildings are vacant? Remember, retail always follows people. So if people aren't living in downtown, your small businesses are likely to suffer. So this is the review, the Main Street approach, which is a framework for revitalization. We're restoring civic value, physical value, social value, and economic value. Thank you, Kim. I'm going to interrupt you for a second. We're going to launch a quick poll and get a feeling for who all is listening this morning. Um, so if you would all just take a moment and click on one of these options. Our question is, what is your current role in your town's Main Street? And our options are, I'm a downtown management professional. I'm a municipal employee or economic development professional. I'm an excited volunteer. I'm a resident or other. And I'm just going to give people a minute to answer. And uh, it looks like we have a pretty good response here. So I'm going to go ahead and close this and let everybody see what people are answering. So we have a fair amount of municipal and uh, economic development professional coverage and a little bit of other things. If, if you're one of the people who selected other, I'd love it if you just chat me out a little message and let me know how you would define yourself. Um, again, we're just trying to get a good idea of who's coming to our webinars and what you might be interested in the future. So, and one other thing I'd like to encourage you as we go, we're now going to dig into a lot of detail. Um, I encourage you to type in your questions as you have them into your control panel. Um, again, if there are quite things that I can answer, I will. Otherwise, we will stop for questions in about 10 minutes. Great. Thank you, everybody, for participating in these polls and in advance for chatting out your questions. It just makes all of this information a lot more useful to everybody. So. Here's where we're going to dig into uh, the nuts and bolts of developing your Main Street Action Plan. It begins with basic strategic planning for downtown. So we're going to start by understanding the conditions on the ground. Understand your market. Start with good basic data. Know your numbers. Um, I always um, say that CERC, Connecticut Economic Resource Center's town pro profiles are a great start. 
but then dig as deep as you can. We're going to go into this in a minute. Simultaneously with that, you can be finding out what do people want, which informs your vision. What does success look like in your downtown? Um, a good vision statement declares your intentions for downtown, which can lead to any necessary planning and regulatory changes that need to happen right up front. Then you're going to analyze your strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats, also known as your SWOT analysis, out of which you're going to develop your goals for downtown. Um, and those goals and then the projects that come out of that are going to be unique to your place. You're, you're always going to begin with clean, safe, attractive, and fun. The projects that you identify out of this will advance your goals, speaking to the, to markets, the target markets that you have and to the opportunities that you have. So on this first step, market research, know your customer. Start with good basic data. Get a handle on your trade area. Get a handle on demographics and lifestyles, purchasing habits, and then both local and regional economic data. Um, the sources include the U.S. Census Bureau, um, state and local agencies have a ton of this information, and then the ESRI, uh, Global Geographic Information System. So s places to go for this information if you um, are new to this. Your municipal or regional economic development officials can certainly help. And you can contact also Connecticut Economic Resource Center, the Connecticut Data Collaborative, or the Yukon Extension Program for assistance in gathering this data for your community. And Kim, I'm going to send out a quick note in the chat box with um, contact information for all of those. Great. Thank you, Judith. You're That's welcome. very helpful. So then as we move on, I think it would be helpful to show a real life example of a Main Street action plan. So we're using the one from Niantic Main Street. Um, Niantic Village is a coastal urban village in southeastern Connecticut in the town of East Lyme on Long Island Sound. The Niantic Main Street program was started by a grassroots core um, group of citizens, including small business owners, um, historical society volunteers, local citizens, many of whom routinely volunteer for everything. We all know those people in our own communities. And then residents, some of whom had originally had second homes in Niantic, but had recently moved to Niantic full time. So they brought with them an awareness of other places other places where they may have lived that had vibrant downtowns. And this was a group that really saw the opportunity in Niantic Village. Some realities about Niantic Village, particularly in the early 2000s, about 2003 was when Niantic Main Street was formed. The year-round population of 3,100 in Niantic Village doubles in the summer months. Um, they, have primar they had, at that time, primarily seasonal businesses and a seasonal business owner culture. In other words, they were okay with making their money about three to four months out of the year. Um, the one mile long Niantic Bay Boardwalk was in the planning stages at that time. And then they have a popular family owned multi-screen movie theater right smack in the center of downtown, right on Main Street. Um, as I had mentioned before, recent new residents that had moved from other places with vibrant downtowns who saw the potential and were prepared to get involved. And then a municipal staff, very good municipal staff, that in some cases, though, was skeptical and a little guarded about the motivations of this grassroots new group that had started. These are just some facts about Niantic Village back in the early 2000s. So on the visioning step, um, the process that was used here, it was a, a focus group model of visioning. So it was the board of Niantic Main Street, Inc., and invited representatives that articulated their vision 
for Niantic Village. This is a very well-written, evocative vision statement that is specific to a unique place. And most importantly, as I had mentioned before, it declares their intentions for downtown. It says that they envisioned residential, commercial, transit, arts, tourism, all as part of their vibrant downtown. So through this vision statement, it was quickly identified that zoning changes were going to be necessary in order to allow increased residential and mixed use um, in order to allow outdoor dining that wasn't allowed at the time in their zoning regulations. And then a shared parking agreement with municipal property owners in the village center. A clear vision statement, and I think this one is a particularly good one, is a tool that you can come back to time and time again to ensure that decisions that are being made about downtown align with what the community wants. So after the vision, the visioning, the next step was the SWOT analysis for identifying the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. This one is, this step is often done in a large group setting with breakout groups in order to keep things organized. But a SWOT analysis can also be done in separate focus groups or affinity groups over the course of a few days or weeks. Um, I like to add a little note here. If you find yourself in the position of facilitating a SWOT analysis, um, as particularly in larger groups, I would ask people to be very succinct and precise. Suggest that their responses can be four to five words and no more. And Kim, I'm going to jump in again for just a moment. Um, just before we get into the real details of the SWOT analysis, I just wanted to let everyone know, as a companion to this webinar, we've created a workbook that will take you step by step through the various analyses and forms that we're presenting today, um, as well as printer-friendly versions of each of the forms. And all of that will be available on our website, along with the recording from today and a PDF version of today's presentation. Great. Thank you. Very helpful, Judith. So we're now going to see the real-life example of Niantic Main Streets and Niantic Village's SWOT analysis back from 2003. These next four slides um, reflect that analysis. They are going to be very detailed, but I imagine that your community is probably going to be able to easily identify with them. So first, you're going to examine the strengths um, you're examining the strengths of place, that is your downtown, the buildings, the vistas, the physical assets, your community, and the region. And also examine the strengths of resources, people, institutions, partners, and funding. Some of the questions that you can ask to prompt people. Um, some groups won't need to be prompted, but if you need to sort of, if this is where you're starting and you need to pull out some information from people, you can ask such questions as, what are your advantages, be, be they destinations or accessibility off the highway or the historic fabric that you may have in your downtown? Another question, what do you do well? Is your organization respected or is your municipality respected? Do you have a customer-oriented town hall? Um, what unique skills and expertise do you have within the community? Do you have design professionals or marketing professionals, volunteering or providing pro bono expertise? And do you have programs and services that are particularly strong? Do you have strong civic organizations that do excellent programs and services? So again, this was um, in, in Niantic's SWOT analysis. Um, this was the, these were the strengths that they came up with. Then we're going to go on to weaknesses. Again, ask people to be honest and be specific. What could be improved? What should be avoided? Are you missing any key skills or competencies? Or do you have, and do you have a weak or negative external image or self-image? Niantic Main Street articulated in their, um, their SWOT analysis under weaknesses, 
they articulated the need for a year-round strong downtown economy and a regulatory environment that is pro-downtown. Again, I had talked earlier about the fact that there were seasonal businesses that was quickly identified as a weakness, um, an economic weakness for the downtown. Um, a note here, again, if you're facilitating or if you're part of the organizing of this SWOT analysis, it is not at all unusual for the weaknesses to be the longest list. Don't be deflated by that. Um, view this as an opportunity to engage people and an indication that people really do care about downtown. They just may not yet see how they can be part of changing things for the better. So from there, we go on to identifying the opportunities. Now this is the time for the glass half full attitude. Encourage people to be optimistic, but realistic. So what trends can be taken advantage of? Are there changes in markets, um, changes in, in policy, government policy? Have there been changes in demographic and lifestyle patterns that can improve downtown? Can you capitalize on existing and potential assets? Um, can you expand programs to address critical issues? And can you build partnerships and leverage resources and build capacity to revitalize downtown with the partners that you have, the anchor institutions that you have. And then the last step in the SWOT analysis is identifying threats. What obstacles are you facing? What's your competition doing? Um, what trends can affect you adversely? Again, think about changes in markets, policy, demographics, lifestyle. Um, again, as a reminder, if you're facilitating SWOT analysis, encourage people to be specific, yet as succinct as possible. And you want the results of this analysis to speak to your unique place so that you can use this to track positive changes in the future. A number of our organizations go back to their SWOT analysis every year or every three years to see how things are coming out, what has changed. Can we move things into different boxes? Did we have a weakness three years ago that we've now overcome? Um, so this is part of your record of how things are changing in downtown. From the SWOT analysis, using the work that we've done, then we begin to articulate our strategic goals. And what we like to say here is to kick this off. You have your, your SWOT analysis, so how do we get from there to articulating goals? One thing that we like to um, share with people is consider the strengths that will minimize your weaknesses while taking advantage of op opportunities that you have to stave off threats. With the knowledge shared from their SWOT analysis, Niantic Main Street came to consensus on three major startup or catalytic goals to get them started up. Um, these goals were to establish the Niantic Main Street organization as the downtown management organization, the voice for downtown. Um, their second goal, to enhance downtown's image and brand. And then their third goal, um, as we've seen already, to address the seasonal and underperforming business culture at that time to make it a year-round economy for a year-round downtown for the community, thus strengthening the local economy. So, we've covered a lot of material. Um, before we go on to project identification and work plan development, let's stop for some questions. Absolutely. And again, I would encourage people to, if you have questions about the SWOT analysis or goal setting, go ahead and enter them in. Um, Julie asked us one question when we were talking about um, the market analysis and wondering if there's a good program or app for collecting data at events. I'm not sure if that's something that we've done. Ah, that's a really good question. Um, you know, I I'd have to um, I'd have to ask around in our national network um, and see, which I will do. Um, yeah, that is an excellent question. I would also say 
um, just it's not an app certainly but I think getting information from people can be both personal face-to-face -face, as well as you know using um, using uh, the tools that tech technical tools that we have I like to start by um, in any downtown events that you may have um, having young people, teenagers particularly, wandering around with clipboards, which they love to do. Which they love to do. Uh, if you have matching, have them in matching T-shirts, it helps even more because they love those and they're easily identifiable as a group. Just asking people some questions, and I say teenagers because families, people that are walking around, will tend to stop if you have just one or two questions. Um, they will they will answer them and so again it's the, what's the information you want where did they come from what do they like to do what would they like to see in downtown in the future Excellent. and we have another question which is one that we actually hear fairly often um, what methods of initial outreach do you recommend to get the proper mix of folks at some of these initial meetings yes yeah, excellent excellent question um, right on so th the first thing I, I would say is um, the size of the groups for each step that we've talked about so far may be different. Um, I like to start by strategically identifying the natural leaders in your community. Have a brainstorming session, um, whether that's you know within town hall if you're a municipal person, um, or or just within the community, and really start to identify who are your natural leaders. Um, these natural leaders represent constituencies. They have spheres of influence. They bring people to the table. So you always start by identifying the leaders within your community. Then for the visioning session that you have, perhaps you only want a smaller group there. Mayhem can quickly ensue because the visioning is um, not quite as um, structured probably as the SWOT analysis. Um, so perhaps you only want this group of leaders as part of the visioning. For the SWOT analysis, you can open that up, asking leaders to invite their groups. So as we talked about, it can be a much bigger group. So use the leaders that you have in the community to help identify who needs to be invited to the table. And then the mechanism to invite them, definitely use social media, uh, Facebook, Twitter, whatever social media is common within the groups and within the municipality itself. And then also your municipal communications to promote community workshops. Um, but again, begin by reaching out to local leaders and have them bring people to the table. Okay, thank you, Kim. I think we can go ahead and Good. move on. Again, we'll, we'll have another stopping place for more questions. So, um, we're going to in a minute, we're going to look at how then um, Niantic Main Street went from the, the goals that they ha had identified to how they arrived at their projects. What projects were they going to start with in their first year? Um, but I'd like to just share here um, a general comment. As you begin to identify projects, Remember that a healthy Main Street begins by addressing quality of life issues. Um, you're going to need to start by ensuring that your downtown is clean and welcoming. Investment's not going to happen unless downtown is clean, safe, attractive, and fun. So um, think about visual elements and amenities that make people feel welcome in downtown. Um, Think about ensuring that you have a healthy business environment and that you're guiding business owners to the resources they may need to be successful. And then think about redefining public safety issues, whether it's inappropriate social behavior or blighted building conditions, as economic development issues. Again, investment's not going to happen if the district is not welcoming. At Connecticut Main Street Center, we believe that vibrant, sustainable main streets and healthy communities depend on having this full range of essential components. We call them our healthy half dozen. Um, that we're, we're looking at economics, transportation, sustainability, stewardship, place, and inclusiveness. 
and under each of these components are multiple ingredients. So as you put together your action plan for Main Street, we encourage you to keep this healthy half dozen in mind. So we're going to go on to the identification of projects that will begin to flesh out the action plan. Um, it's important that your action plan be a balance of projects that are quick, inexpensive, and highly visible with those that are more complex, more expensive, and re require additional capacity and probably partners to get things done. Um, there are any number of formats that you can use for an action plan summary, but Connecticut Main Street Center often shares this. We find it to be an effective format. Um, so with this format, um, you're going to start by listing your goals in the far left-hand column. So you see Niantic Main Street's three major startup catalytic goals. And then the four-point framework horizontally across the top. So as you're about to see, the projects in the action plan appear both under which of the four point functions and which goal they relate to. So this is going to be a lot to look at right here, but we're going to land on this um, slide for a minute and talk about it so you can kind of take things in. Niantic Main Street's first year action plan has this really good balance, I think, of the quick, highly visible, easy, inexpensive with those um, projects that are definitely going to go beyond year one, that are going to take a few years. Um, in particular, I've highlighted some things here. The projects that you see in blue, these are projects that um, were an indication that they needed to get a handle on data, on the conditions on the ground in year one. So the photo inventory of buildings, streetscape, downtown elements, the property, building and property inventory, um, the neighborhood consumer survey, the business surveying the businesses themselves, um, all getting a handle on their data, on their numbers. The projects in red, um, these are projects that required coordination with municipal departments. Um, guidelines, streetscape, facade programs, zoning issues. This was an opportunity to establish trust and build long-term relationships with the town staff. So it was very wise of them to really make sure they were thinking about this as they identified these projects. Um, and then the projects in orange. This was um, in order to establish trust and build relationships with the small business owners in the village center. So Niantic Main Street identified these projects. So again, this summary sheet helps coordinate and attract partners and volunteers. Also, the work plan discipline keeps you organized and it helps measure the return on investment in your Main Street program. Sometimes the lead on a project, we're about to go into specific projects being work planned out, sometimes the lead on a project will be the municipality, uh, sometimes a citizen volunteer, and sometimes a local anchor institution or civic organization will be the lead. So we're going to go into um, a project plan template. So. This is, the, this is a form that we often recommend. Um, we're going to zoom in and ensure that each project is thoroughly work planned out. So at the top of the screen is the opportunity to identify a project leader. That project leader is going to be responsible for ensuring that this form is completed and maintained. So for, for Niantic Main Street's project here, I'm going to toggle back here to a second to their action plan. Under organization, under their first goal, they, they identified a project of establishing a speaker's bureau. So this was their project plan for that. Project leader at the top was Jane. Um, this was the organization committee that um, identified and was charged with um, completing this project. 
It relates to the goal of Niantic Main Street becoming the coordinating agency for the revitalization of Niantic Village. Um, so highlights of this form right here. Moving from left to right, um, it's, you're identifying each task, the discrete tasks of the project, then who's responsible for each one of these tasks, your timetable, um, then the important budget implications, if there are any. Um, then the community partners that can be part of the team that brings this project to fruition. In this case, uh, with establishing the Speakers Bureau for Niantic Village, in-kind coaching was provided by the Connecticut Storytelling Center, which is a wonderful nonprofit in East Line that helped them out. Then the next column over, the required number of hours um, to complete each task or the project as a whole. This is important because it helps set expectations for any volunteers that you may want to bring in. You need to let them know how much time that they need to give to a certain project. It also tracks the amount of time spent on each project. So organizationally, that's very important to be collecting. Um, and then the status of each activity, so you can stay on top of that. And then finally, the last column on the far right, you're tracking your measurable results. This can be both quantitative and qualitative. So you can see at the bottom of this form on the totals how many volunteers it took in the, in the who column there. Um, the timetable. For this particular project, it was a startup project. It was one of the first things they worked on. So it was a spring through the summer project. The budget, they had in-kind help from the Storytelling Center, so there was actually no outright costs for establishing the Speakers Bureau. Um, the number of partners were then identified actually over in the, the far right. But the number of volunteer hours, um, they established early on that it would take them approximately 60 hours from start to finish to do this project all the way through. And then under that far right hand column on the, the measurables, um, they identified six to nine new organizations as partners. Now, the Speakers Bureau basically went around to civic organizations, nonprofit organizations, the faith-based community, um, other entities in town to talk about Niantic Village, about the revitalization, and how people could um, join in the fun, could be part of the Niantic Main Street organization. So, another opportunity to stop for questions. Well, I don't have any that have been typed in. I imagine that was a lot of information we just threw at people. Mm -hmm. um, one thing that, another question that we often get obviously, is how we can help you all to go through this process. Yes, absolutely. Um, first of all, as Judith had talked about before, I think the accompanying workbook and worksheets that we're providing that Judith has put together for this webinar can be tremendously helpful. Um, we have heard of a couple of our members that are um, attending these webinars live, but then going back to the recordings of the webinars that we put up on our website, and they're scheduling webinar watch parties. So they're pulling in partners within their downtown, people in the community that want to be part of this, um, and just um, replaying the webinar. So I think with a combination of the workbook and the worksheets um, and doing a watch party is a great idea. Um, then, if you are going through the steps of this, a visioning session or a SWOT analysis, if, and you're looking for facilitators, and some people in our audience who I know are very good facilitators themselves, but if you feel like you need some extra help there, I would always advise that you um, go out to your local community foundation. There are many community foundations in Connecticut, and they each have territories. The community foundations are great sources of um, expertise for facilitate, you know, facilitators for communities. Um, and often there's local expertise here. There are corporations or other institutions that will often provide facilitation as a pro bono um, sort of give back to the community. 
Um, and then certainly, Connecticut Main Street Center can help. Um, I would suggest that probably you email us to start a conversation. Excellent. Um, I do have a couple more questions. Um, Catherine is asking if you could say, and this is a quickie, what the Speakers Bureau was. Is that speakers about the project, speaking to the project, or speakers as an attraction for Main Street? Yeah, yeah, good question. Um, thank you for asking that, Catherine. Um, when the organization was first starting, it really was, the Speakers Bureau was to get the word out about the organization, about the mission of the organization, and how um, it was going to be a community approach to revitalization. Um, there are some Main Street organizations or some entities that continue to have speakers bureaus um, beyond the first year, and then that really is an opportunity about unique projects that come along and how people can be informed and be, be a part of that. Excellent. And then also, do we recommend that the coordinator or director be in charge of these forms, or do you simply encourage a capable volunteer to do this? I think that depends on your community, quite honestly. Um, again, it's sort of uh, looking at the expertise that you have within the community. Um, when you're first starting in Main Street, um, and if you have an, a Main Street organization that's starting on the ground, their function in the, the catalytic phase, the first few years, is to, is to convene, is to bring people together. is isn't necessarily to say, well, it's not to say, we're the experts, we know everything, because those don't exist. No, nobody knows everything. Um, but it really is a function of bringing people around the table. Um, but then within that organization, or within the municipality, or within your community, sometimes you just have people that are really good, um, very naturally, at, at facilitating and, and, and helping lead discussions. So keep an eye out for what is just naturally already occurring in your own community. Excellent advice. Um, I am going to go ahead, before we start sort of the last little piece of our presentation, I'd like to ask you all one more question. Um, and this is, how would you describe the current level of community involvement in your downtown efforts? So the options we've given you are, no one is thinking about this yet. We are unsure of how to identify or involve partners and volunteers. We have lots of people involved doing lots of different things, but none of it is coordinated yet. We have active and engaged partners with defined roles or other, which again, if you're somewhere else, if you wouldn't mind sending me a message, that would be great. So we're just going to give you a minute or two to put in what your, what your answers are. and this. This will lead into the last few slides of the presentation where we're going to talk a little bit about implementation and um, how you actually would go about getting people involved. Yeah, and I think um, while, while Judith is monitoring the input from this, this is a critical thing to be thinking about. I, I know particularly those of you that are municipal officials that work for municipalities or sit on boards and commissions on municipalities. Um, one of the big challenges is we have a lot of studies, a lot of plans that have been made that sometimes sit on shelves after they've been made because the implementation part of it is missing. And so in Main Street, we consider community involvement as absolute, an absolute key to getting things implemented. And so the thinking about where you are in community involvement is a very, very important step. Yes. So I'm going to go ahead and close this and share it. It looks like we have people at various different levels. Uh, quite a few have a lot of people involved, but they're not coordinated yet. And that's mm -hmm. probably a really good place to be. Mm -hmm. um, and others who are definitely going to be interested in how to get people involved. Good. Okay, so this leads into then this slide right here. Take a take a moment to look at this again. The um, the four point approach right here. Um, in order to implement your Main Street Action Plan, it is going to be necessary to partner with other organizations in the community. Um, nobody can do it alone. 
Those of you that work for municipal government will be relieved to hear that municipal government can't do it alone, that you need people dedicated from with, throughout the community to help. So you're going to start with the partners who participated in your original visioning process and your original SWOT analysis. Organized under our four-point grid, I've identified organizations and institutions in town and in the region that have the capacity to bring people together to address the issues that you previously identified. These are generic examples, no doubt. Um, your community has these and probably many more. Um, so think about this, think about your own community and, and how this speaks to your community. Um, and then go through uh, a brainstorming exercise of these organizations and others um, thinking about you know, restoring civic value, engaging the community, restoring physical value, restoring social value, and restoring economic value to the downtown. Just thinking about the partners and volunteers that are already within the community. So then after doing all the good work of putting together your action plan, then the real work begins and that's the implementation itself. So if you've completed your project plans, you'll be able to see where you need help. Um, this is the ideal time to seek out partners and volunteers that can help implement specific projects. Um, using social media, using your website, any of the websites within the community, again, reaching out to those natural leaders, and then local media to get the word out. Ask to be placed on agendas of local civic organizations to engage more partners. And reach out to the anchor institutions within your community. So, Judith, I don't know if we have any more questions at this time. I don't have any more that have been typed in yet. Okay. I do want to let everybody know that I have just dropped the workbook and the uh, Word document of worksheets into the handout section on your control panel. You should be able to download them there right now or they will also be on our website um, today or tomorrow as soon as we get the recording from today and can load that all up together. Um, so I'm, we're at 1147 so I think we're good. probably okay. at a good point. Um, yeah. All right. And I want the, the the next thing I just want to let, let sure make sure everybody knows is that our next webinar will be on April fifth at eleven o'clock in the morning. Um, we are doing Windsor Locks Goes TIF, which will be a real life case case study about how the town adopted the first TIF district plan in the state of Connecticut. Presenters will be Patrick McMahon, economic development coordinator for the town of Windsor Locks, and Michael Andriano, attorney with Pullman Cumley LLC and the author of the state's Connecticut, the state of Connecticut's TIF district enabling legislation. We encourage you to invite your partners and local volunteers who might be interested or involved in your revitalization efforts. Um, and that should be a very interesting webinar. Right, so for, for today, that's kind of a save the date for everybody. We will have um, registration for that announced soon um, and you'll all get that information. Sure. I'm going to just jump in and throw in one more question that was entered in um, asking, and you kind of addressed this at the end, but are Connecticut Main Street personnel available to come to communities to discuss everything we've talked about? We today? certainly can, and I would say um, that uh, to the ex you know, some of it will depend on, on how robustly you would like us to be involved in that. So I would say the first step would be to shoot us an email, info at ctmainstreet.org, and then we can start a conversation about what you feel that you need in your community. I think that's the best way to start it. Excellent. Good. So I would be remiss if I didn't um, thank our sponsors. Um, Connecticut Main Street Center sponsors are Eversource and the State of Connecticut. Department of Economic and Community Development. And our growth sponsors are UIL Holdings Corporation and the State Historic Preservation Office. And then our webinars are part of our Main Street Forums for the 21st Century. And this program is sponsored by Webster Bank, the New Alliance Foundation, UIL Holdings, 
Fasson O'Neill, CDM Smith, the Connecticut Economic Resource Center, and Pullman and Conley LLC. So we thank them very much. Excellent. Thank you very much, Kim, for your presentation today. And thank you all for uh, spending your morning with us and atten attending our webinar. We certainly covered a lot today. Um, again, I encourage you to visit our website, ctmainstreet.org, where you can find a great deal more information. And in a day or two, there will be a recording of today's webinar along with the presentation and the workbook and worksheets. Um, please help us by completing the survey that you will receive at the, as you exit. Again, it really helps us to improve these sessions, and we're very curious about what else you might be interested in. And we would love to see you on our social media. Please like us on, on Facebook at CT Main Street Center and follow us on Twitter, hashtag CT Main Street. Have a great day, and we'll see you again April 5th.